Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Rising. We have a really interesting lineup ahead of us. Robbie, what's in the show? Well, we're going to hear from our panelists reacting to Biden's remarks about the Buffalo shooting. And then Julia Manchester and Kelly Meyer will break down some of the Pennsylvania primary election results, other election results we had last night. Then we'll discuss why Biden is sending troops back to Somalia with a special guest. But first, an attorney for the Democratic lobbying firm Blue Star Strategies says the DOJ inquiry into the firm's lobbying efforts on behalf of the Ukrainian energy company Burisma has closed with no finding of any wrongdoing and a major sigh of relief for the president and his son, Hunter Biden. For context, Hunter allegedly brokered the deal between Blue Star and Burisma. This comes as Blue Star Strategies retroactively registered as a foreign agent just last week for arranging meetings between the State Department and Burisma. The Justice Department initially opened the investigation into Blue Star for potential illegal lobbying after Blue Star took on Burisma while Hunter served on the board. So I don't know if this resolution is going to really please or 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 make it a case closed situation for Republicans. I expect mm -hmm. there will still be some looking into this kind of stuff once Republicans retake Congress. Probably a lot of looking into this stuff. Probably the entire Republican agenda will be holding Hunter Biden accountable, <laughs> if I had to guess. <laughs> yeah, who knows, you know, anything, but the it, it reminds me of that saying that, you know, a lie goes around the world twice before the truth puts its shoes on or whatever. I mean, with these kinds of stories, the implication of wrongdoing, I think, does its damage regardless of what the outcome is. And I think you're right, the people Fair. who don't like who they don't like are going to keep liking, not liking that person, regardless of if they're cleared. Trump's impeachment's not resulting in him being, you know, actually impeached. It doesn't matter to any liberal who is critical of Donald Trump. So, I, and I guess they should have. Really, there there is wrongdoing clearly because they should have uh, registered as a foreign. They've done that now, but they the work they were doing on behalf of foreign agents was years ago. So they should have registered then, but they're doing it now. Yeah, so I yeah, don't know. yeah. I I think that's right. Um, moreover, the laptop repair shop owner that serviced Hunter's uh, laptop in 2019 is speaking out about the FBI's interest, or rather disinterest, in the probe as well. According to the man's son, the FBI did not seem interested in reviewing Hunter's laptop and advised the repairman to lawyer up and not discuss the findings with anyone back in October of 2019. But now, contents of that laptop are available to the public. 26-year-old former Trump aide Garrett Ziegler uploaded nearly 130,000 emails from Hunter's laptop onto a public site. Ziegler described the emails as a modern Rosetta Stone of white and blue-collar crime. It's a powerful imagery. However, the Daily Mail reports 15,000 emails they previously verified are missing from the dump. The site BidenLaptopEmails.com even allows users to download the emails which includes the infamous 10% for the big guy message. So, you know, how, again, how much information in here is actually important or relevant? I don't know. Uh, it, it, what still gets me about this story, really, is, the, is that you were branded a conspiracy theorist, mm. a, a spreader of misinformation, a purveyor of lies to to claim that it was real and that they were authentic emails from Hunter Biden. That was something you couldn't say on Facebook, you couldn't say on Twitter. The mainstream media, again, accused you of being all those things if you said it. That went on for some time, and that, we, we all know it's real. The guy exists. The laptop repairman is yeah. real. Yeah. Uh, he's pu putting out a book. Um, I, I guess the theory was that he was fake or he didn't exist, and Russians had made it up, which never made any sense at all. Like, if there's a guy. With a laptop, it's it's like, Russians don't hire actors to portray like repair shop like that. That wouldn't ha that didn't make any sense. So the the idea that like very serious minded journalists and content moderators say yeah it, it can't be real like but the guy is real. So how could it not yeah. be real? And that that was that was my moment of when I was trying to understand. I'm like okay absolutely Rudy Giuliani shady character Russians interested in this that could be so, but. If there's actually a laptop and there's actually a guy, like that can't be a that's not going to be a Russian yeah. situation. I think the implication <laughs> was that because it might benefit Russia's interests, that it was like fruit from the poisonous tree. Like we shouldn't trust the information just because it may benefit someone who Democrats as a whole were oppositional to in that electoral context. 
However, this is the same thing that emerged. I, I've told this story before, you know, early on in the Bernie campaign, somebody called and asked me, a reporter was asking me about how I felt that there was all this Russian disinformation going on that was trying to target black Americans and say, America has these racial problems and the Democratic Party isn't doing anything about it. And I said, well, <laughs> where's the lie? America yeah, has these racial yeah. problems and the Democratic Party yeah. isn't doing anything about it. The best way to combat that kind of disinformation is with by addressing the needs of your populace. And in this case, it seems like it, it's very frustrating that not a single intrepid journalist said it to even make their bones with trying to get to the bottom of the story because everyone seemed to buy this logic that doing so would help the enemy in some bizarre way. It wasn't even a direct claim that this stuff, you know, this stuff is, you know, I, I am Hunter Biden and I'm saying this isn't real. No, it was everyone just kind of went along with the idea that we can't even investigate what is going on here because doing so would be advantageous to Russia. And that is an incredibly dangerous place to be in. The way Russian uh, lobbying or misinformation or, or, or collusion or interference is described in the media is something akin to hypnotism. It's like they're <laughs> hypnotizing people into voting yeah. for the wrong candidates. Yeah. But there's no reason um, black Democrats would be dissatisfied with Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden on their own yeah. and not vote for them. They have to be they have to be confused by like like looking into the spirally eye or something, whatever. <laughs> the, but it's the rotating like black and white swirl yeah. that causes you to and then your eyes go. Oh. Yeah, like, yeah. That's how they describe it happening, and it's it's not. <laughs> It's just not any of these pathetic efforts on Facebook, these like weird Facebook groups or weird accounts. Like if, if it was that easy to change people's minds or to get people to vote, they, they obviously weren't that invested in a Hillary Clinton presidency. Right. And isn't that her wrongdoing? Isn't that the campaign's wrongdoing? No, Robbie. Some... It was her turn. <laughs> <laughs> she, she cannot be. But no, it, right. She cannot. She can only be failed. Yeah. She, can, she does not fail. We fail her or yeah. or the main or whoever the mainstream Democratic Party is, which is why this uh, the level of investment in the in Russia collusion interference from the media and the Democratic Party is just is very unhealthy for them because it allows them not to see the kind of flaws in their messaging. Uh, especially their messaging. Sometimes it's not even their policy. I, mean, I don't like their policies. Republicans don't like their policies. But a lot of voters who I think do like their policies hate their messaging because it's insane. Right. They, they refuse to acknowledge that there's a such thing as legitimate criticism of their approach to anything. I have always been a believer. Look, again, I was not rooting for Hillary Clinton. You know, I was a Bernie supporter back in 2016. But it, what was so frustrating for me as a Bernie supporter back then was that once he was out of the primaries, she was still refused to acknowledge that there could be any credibility to people who were concerned about why she had taken so much money from these banks, about what, what you know, it wasn't just about the speeches, it was about this pay for play, as we had, we were closer to and coming out of, and a lot of us were young enough to still have been really dinged, um, our parents really dinged by the financial crisis in 2008. And she was there for that and wasn't accountable in any way for that. And it was suspicious and demoralizing. And the idea that she didn't understand that by just confronting it in an honest way, she could head off the criticism in a way that was meaningful and ultimately helped her in her efforts, instead of sitting there kind of smugly and saying, the only reason you could have these concerns is if you were a sexist. The only reason you could have these concerns is if you were in league with Russia or you were uh, a, a right. terrible Bernie bro who just had it out for me. And that was frustrating because a lot of, I think a lot of people don't give the public enough credit that we are, we are willing to hear you out and accept an apology, frankly. But there's a special place in hell for women who don't <laughs> uh, stand up for other women, Brianna. So it's me. I, I'll I see you there with them. I'll know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and I, to, to go back to the topic at hand, I predict this will not put the Hunter Biden story to bed whatsoever. There will be investigations, massive investigations, when Republicans retake Congress, which they are going to do. <laughs> so uh, next up, we will have Your Radar, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs>